to do Space News. Hello and good morning. Today we're in the Space News studio celebrating a very special day. Yes, today is the one year anniversary of the first woman on the moon. Paris Hyatt, age 24, had been training for years before she got asked to fly to the moon and back. She set off from the NASA space station and flew all the way to the moon and back, making her the first woman to ever set foot on the moon. We will be talking to our news reporter, Chloe Flood, who will be live with Paris, and will also be answering some of the questions that some of you viewers have texted in. Also in today's show, we'll be covering the following subjects. What is gravity and what does it have to do with space and space travel? How does gravity affect an astronaut? The, um, uh, we've got some models on the solar system and we'll cover a bit about satellites. But first let's go to Chloe, who's live with Paris now. Thank you Charlotte and Lucy. Sure we've had a woman go up to space, but until last year we never heard about the first woman on the moon. I have the privilege to be with Paris Hyatt today and find out a bit about what it's like up in space. So tell us Paris, how gravity, or should I say having no gravity, affects an astronaut like yourself when you're up in space? Well, when you're on Earth you don't float. Everything is pulled down by gravity, but when you get into space all the gravity goes. It makes the heaviest things seem really light, which is quite a laugh. It's quite weird though, and all your body fluids rush to your head, so most of the time you feel sick and dizzy. Sounds like hard work. You have to exercise every day or your bones would become so weak it would feel horrible. There is no difference between the floor and the ceiling, so it takes some getting used to. Also, when you're in space, you grow several centimetres, which is good for me, because I'm not exactly tall. But unfortunately, when you're back to Earth, you shrink back to your normal size, which is a shame. Well, as you know, there is a lot about space explanation, and as today plays a big part in it, we have made you something very, very special. Do you like to hold that? Oh, thank you. This is a timeline of space exploration. We're going to read some out because there's quite a bit. 1957, Sputnik satellite blasts into space. A Russian satellite has been launched into space, the first man-made object ever to leave the Earth's atmosphere. 1958, monkey lost after space flight. The search for a small bushy-tailed monkey fired into space and the nose of a cone of a Jupiter rocket has been cooled off. 1960, radio telescope makes space history. The British radio telescope at Jordel Bank in Cheshire has set a new space record making contact with the American pioneer V satellite at a distance of 407,000 miles. 1961, Shepard becomes first US astronaut. Commander Alan Shepard has been recovered in a space capsule in the Atlantic after becoming the first American in space. 1962, US spaceman orbits Earth. The first American to orbit the Earth has landed safely in the Atlantic Ocean. 1965, millions watch space probe crash into the moon. A groundbreaking 15 minute live broadcast has shown ordinary Americans what it feels like to be a space probe hurtling to destruction on the moon. 1967, three astronauts die in Apollo 1 tragedy. 19... Th three American astronauts have died after a fire swept through the Apollo spacecraft designed for a man flight to the moon during rehearsals at Cape Kennedy. 1967, Russian cosmonaut dies in space crash. The Soviet Union has announced a catastrophic failure of its latest mission with the crash of Soyuz 1 and the death of a cosmonaut on board. 1968, first astronaut orbits moon. The Apollo 8 spacecraft has taken its crew of three astronauts safely into orbit around the moon, the first manned mission to achieve the feat. 1971, man plays golf on the moon. The first manned mission to the moon since the near-disastrous Apollo 13 is on its way home after two successful moonwalks. 1979, Europe launches first rocket. The first European-built rocket, Arena 1, has successfully completed its maiden flight. 1990, Hubble Telescope takes off for space. The American Space Agency, NASA, has successfully launched the Space Shuttle of Discovery from Cape Carnival in Florida on its historic mission to carry the Hubble Space Telescope into orbit 300 miles, 611.5 kilometers, above the Earth. 2001, first space tourist blast off. A billionaire businessman from California has become the first paying passenger to go into sp uh, space. 2004, Cassini captures Saturn's rings. The international mission to Saturn, known as Cassina Hudgens, has successfully gone into orbit around the planet. Now, 2009, Paris Hyatt, 24 year old astronaut, the okay. first woman on the moon. Wow, I feel so happy to be part of space exploration now. There was so much in there that I didn't know about. You know, some of it was a bit before my time. Well, I do have to say I feel very sorry for that poor monkey who still could be floating around in space now. Right, back to you Paris. We're going to need to squeeze some more information out of you, if that's okay. That's fine. 
Okay, so what exactly does gravity have to do with space and space travel? As soon as the space rocket's engine is turned off, it starts to float around in space. Everything in it starts to float too. In space, gravity pulls all the planets to orbit the sun, because the sun has the most gravity. The sun overpowers all the other planets. Without the sun, the planets would just float away. Well there, there was lots that I didn't know. But I think um, you'd like to say a bit about your book, is that right? Thank you, yes. I'm releasing my new book, Space and Me. It's all about my time in space and what it was like. I'm hoping to um, influence and um, inspira inspirate um, young children everywhere who hopefully could become the space astronauts of the future. Wow. Right, that's really good, you know? Sounds brilliant. Right, we're going to have to leave you now. We're going to have to let you get back to your training programme because I know how busy you are being an astronaut. OK, thank you. Back to the studio. Why the fuck are you okay? Thank you, Chloe, and thank you, Paris, for taking time out of your training programmes to see us. So from today, Paris's book will be for sale in your local bookshops. Right, now we're going to announce the winner of the <coughs> primary school post competition. We asked four schools to make posters on astronauts for us to display here in the studio. This poster was made by South East Primary School. Yes, that does mean that you are the winners. They have included so many terms about astronauts, pictures, what their suits are made of, experiences, and even included their own little astronaut called Terry. Now, we've been taking some text messages and some phone calls, so we should have a Mia Brown on the phone. Mia, are you there? Yes. Hi. Um, I just wondered, what is a satellite? No one's ever told me. A satellite is an artificial entity that orbits Earth or other bodies. There are about 2,500 satellites in orbit around Earth. Satellites can also be um, natural, like planets and the moon. Um, but man-made astronauts can be used for weather, navigation, communications and to view other planets. We have also got a very good model that shows Aristotle's views, Copernicus's views and Galileo's views. <laughs> there are only seven. This is the geometric cosmology. We, there are only seven objects visible the, the sun, the moon, plus five other planets. It was obvious that the planets were not on the crystal sphere, as early people thought, since the moon passed in front of the sun and other planets. Pl Plato, a philosopher, first proposed that the planets went in circular orbit. Then Aristotle developed the first solar system model, playing the planets in order from the Earth as seen, the geometric solar system. Heliocentric theory. Slightly later, Aristarchus, 270 BC, proposed an alternative solar system, putting the sun at the center and the moon only orbiting the Earth. But people saw flaws with this. The Earth in orbit meant it moved before Newton's discovery of gravity. It was impossible to imagine motion without being able to feel it. Nico no Nicholas Copernicus also proposed this idea on his deathbed. At such a religious century, it was dangerous to declare scientific solutions. Many ideas of the solar system went round in circles, ideas being put aside, then brought back, and until the late 1900s, we still weren't sure. Um, here's a little model of uh, <laughs> the alignment of planets. The sun would be much bigger, even in um, scale to model, scale with the model. This is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto. So that's the end of our show today. A huge thank you to Paris, Chloe, and all you viewers. Keep watching because next week is going to be brilliant. We have another special guest on the show and some really cool facts about the planet Saturn. Thank, Thank you, you and goodbye from Space, Space News. News.